Hi, I'm Todd Foreman. Welcome to Hubscapes. We're down on Cambridge Street today at Mass General Hospital in front of the famous Bullfinch Building, also known as the Ether Dome. Built between 1818 and 1823, it was originally designed by Charles Bullfinch, Boston's foremost early architect, but finished by Alexander Paris, a student, when Charles Bullfinch was called to Washington by President Monroe to complete the rebuilding of Washington, D.C., which had been destroyed by the British in the War of 1812 was constructed of Chelmsford granite and built by prisoners who were brought in as a work detail. To my right was the Charles River. It's October now, but what happened here on October 16, 1846 made world history. Come on upstairs with me. We're upstairs now in the Bullfinch Building. And the reason we're upstairs is the one thing that surgeons required to do their delicate surgery was light. And in the 1800s, the one thing they didn't have much of was directable light. Above us is a glass dome so that they could operate here during the daylight hours and see what they were doing. What makes this area so impressive is that on October 16, 1846, the world's first surgical procedure incorporating anesthesia was used. The word anesthesia didn't even exist at the time. As you can see from the painting here, the procedure is to remove a tumor from the neck of young Gilbert Abbott. The surgeon is the famous Dr. John Warren, and the anesthesiologist is William Thomas Green Morton. What he has here is a sponge containing ether. They have put this patient to sleep and they have painlessly removed the tumor. As often happens in historical events, there was a lot of acrimony following. Morton claims that he thought up the idea of using ether for anesthesia and his partner, Charles Jackson, said the same thing. Actually, ether had been invented as long ago as 1540 in Prussia by Cordis and ether was found throughout the world. People were using it in what they called ether frolics, but nobody had used it for surgery until now. A few years ago, I went to a conference in Phoenix, Arizona, and we took a little side trip to Sedona, where the mystics say there is a vast harmonic convergence. Well, that may be. But there was a more practical harmonic convergence in this very room in 1846, when medicine and art and surgery and religion and philosophy all came together at one point, and it came together right here. To understand, you have to know that the word pain actually comes from the Latin word meaning penalty and that throughout Western civilization up until this time, you had to suffer pain to earn salvation. Everyone suffered pain, especially during surgery. And that's not even to mention the poor surgeons who were at great risk for nervous breakdowns and had to perform the subtlest surgery as quickly as they can. They started in the medieval times as butchers and it became a profession years later but it was difficult for the patient and for the surgeon. Now, the patient was discharged on December 6th, having said that he had felt no pain and was happy to have had the surgery done. Dr. Morton and Charles Jackson died on happy deaths years later. There was bitter acrimony over all of this. But this is a historic event, and as they say, it was the death of pain and the birth of surgery. And having learned that, you can go about your way with warm fuzzies knowing that this is a true historic event. And you will have just missed one of the great transitions in Western civilization. Anesthesia could have come along any time. Certainly Humphrey Davies and Priestley in England knew about it. But there was no societal need for the relief of pain. It could have happened during the French Revolution with its equality and fraternity, but the French Revolution failed. 
I would argue that anesthesia could have only been founded in Boston and at this time. Let me tell you what's going on in Boston in this particular epoch. Unitarianism, abolitionism, vegetarianism, the Women's Christian Temperance Movement, the American Bible Society, mental health through Dorothy Dix, transcendentalism, the Lyceum Circuits, public libraries, education for the blind at the Perkins Institute, and the reforms of education through Horace Mann. Now, all of these might have been going on in various parts of the world, but only in Boston do these all come together at the same time. And so all of a sudden, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness finally mean something. Man does not have to suffer pain. That could have only come from Boston. Well, that's Boston for you, and I'm Todd Foreman. See you on the trail. Oh, and by the way, this is Patty. He's been around for 500 years before Christ, and he was there at the original birth of anesthesia.